my three quarter inch dado stack in my table saw. I set up a fence and I'm basically ripping this right through the center of this tenon because that tenon centered with my piece. So I lined it up so it cuts right through this tenon. I'm going to do a couple passes. I'd like to get like a half inch to a three quarter groove in this. So I'll start off slow and work my way up probably to do about three passes. Something to note about this project, the plywood I got is actually just about three quarters of an inch. Um, I don't know if it's that's because it's a specialty ply or just of the place that orders it if it comes close to three quarters of an inch. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or a lot of other places, a lot of times three quarter inch plywood is actually 23 30 seconds, which doesn't sound like a huge difference to three quarters, but if you're making these tight grooves, but if you're making these tight grooves like this, when you slide your piece in, even a little bit of a fraction off, a 30 seconds, a 16th, you'll have a substantial gap in there, and this will really wiggle in there. I got lucky, this is, it's a little, it's a hair shy of three quarter. If you weren't really staring at your tape measure, you would think it was three quarter. So I was able to get away with using a three quarter inch bit, as well as my three quarter inch stack. This wouldn't have been as big of a problem because these come with shims and you can make them um, odd sizes. But I don't know if they make router bits at eye size, odd size shapes for plywood. In which case, if your plywood's an odd shape, you'll probably just have to make your own template to make up that shape similar to how I showed you with that sleigh bed template so that you get the right size groove. After cutting that groove, I reset all my pieces up so I could measure for my plywood. This is what you want to see in the corner. Everything's flush so that plywood would fit in here nicely. And I measured and the plywood itself is going to be pretty close to a plain sheet of plywood. This is 47 and an eighth by 78 and three quarters, so that's going to be kind of tough to cut my band saw. I'll have so much counter levering off the edge. I'm just going to clear off my table saw top and mark my two straight edges and then rip it with my circular saw. Um, I was going to just make this groove 48 inches, but this plywood's like almost 49 inches, so it wasn't worth it to make this groove really deep so I didn't have to cut my plywood in one dimension. I used that other piece of plywood on top of my new piece of plywood as my straight edge. I marked how much I'm taking off and then this saw is about an inch and a half from the cut to the edge of the fence. So then I just mounted this piece about an inch and a half off that cut all the way down and now I could rip this clean and then I'll do the exact same thing on the edge and rip that off. So I have both of my pieces mocked up and in the rough um, distance apart from where they're going to end up being. If there's anything I learned from propping, uh, putting together that headboard it is that the glue up is going to be absolutely zero fun. Probably going to have to think of some sort of clever way to put that all together. I might end up gluing together one side at a time, but I'm going to deal with that when it comes time to glue it up. I have kind of a cleat clamp to the top of that plywood because this one isn't as bad. You could see it on camera. This plywood is bowing ever so slightly and that one bows as well. 
those two lighter marks I think are where they had like stretchers on the plywood stack and it weathered um, in the spots that weren't exposed to the sunlight so I'm hoping to be able to sand that down because the figure on this side the plywood is just really cool looking whereas the back isn't ugly it's just not as nice looking as this so I'm hoping I could sand that down and make it even so I could use that side um, as the show side. So the bow in both of these pieces of plywood I'm not even going to begin to deal with right now. I'm actually a little surprised it's bowing this badly. Um, this is really high grade veneered plywood. It's veneered on both sides. Usually when you get a bow like this it's because one side is um, absorbing moisture at a greater rate than the other side creating that bow. I know one of the ways you can get that out is to spray the concave side with moisture, put the convex side in the sunlight and the moisture will kind of absorb through the piece and equalize the humidity and it should flatten out a little bit. I'm not really going to start doing that until it comes time for glue up to really mess with this. I was thinking of making a thicker piece of veneer on top to try and straighten it, but I think in general the problem is um, it's the beginning of September here, but in general the entire summer has been extremely, extremely humid, higher than average humidity. This one's bowed as well, but you can see with the clamps it's not as bad, but like I was saying, higher than average humidity, and in the past week it's been extremely humid, 70 to 80 percent relative humidity in the air, so I'm hoping these extreme bowing is kind of just coming from the fact that there's so much moisture in the air, and once these things naturally dry out they might go back into shape. What I'm going to do now is rip the two side rails down to size. I believe those are still going to be six inches. And the way that I'm going to attach these is much more of a traditional method. So each piece will have tenons on either side and I'll put shallow mortises into all of my corners, tenons on each side of my side rails which are over there. And since this isn't a table or anything like that, the tenons aren't necessarily to for superstructure. It's more for alignment and just keeping everything nice. When you have a tenon in there, you don't have to worry about that butt joint. I'm getting a bunch of gappage issues. And then I believe I'm using bolts on this. These are the bed bolts I'm planning on using and those are kind of designed to be used with that tenon style that I'm talking about. You can butt joint these. Um, I've done that with a sleigh bed just because the sides were so thick. Um, and it works fine, but the way it seems that it's most proper to put them together is kind of those shallow tenons. Also, I've never used hardware like this, mainly because a lot of them you're going into end grain and screws into end grain just never stay for a long amount of time. And even though these sorts of hardwares do not get terrible reviews online, a lot of the reviews are like, they work great for about five years and then things started to come apart and things started to shake and rattle and I just don't want to have to worry about that happening down the line. They seem to work well and then everything kind of loosens up. Um, a fall safe is going to be these bed bolts, those that sort of design will not loosen. So since the mattress is 80 inches and I want a little play on either side, I'm going to make these side rails 81 inches. Since I'm going to have a half inch tenon on either side, I'm going to cut those to 82. They're both at 82, so now I can put them on my table saw and rip them down to 6 inches. And then I'll cut my tenons the exact same way I cut my tenons before on my radial arm saw with the blade lifted. I feel like that is the easiest way to do it and very accurate. Once I have my tenons, I'll cut my shallow mortises on all corners of the bed and I could kind of mock those side rails in place. So I ripped my side rails down to 6 inches and the nice thing is, is I kind of planned it to have two little chunks left which is nice. I can make my own veneer to edge band the edges of this plywood and it will match perfectly. 
Then I went through with my little tenon marker and marked a half inch around these whole, around both pieces because it's going to be a half inch tenon. And then since this lumber is an inch and three eighths thick, I then went through and marked it down here. So it's going to cut about three eighths of an inch off either edge to leave me with about a three quarter inch tenon. And then I just gauged that off of my saw. It's probably not going to cut all the way down to this line the first time. I always give myself a little bit of leeway. It's easier to creep up on these cuts with this saw and cut a little short than to cut it too deep and then you have an uneven tenon. I want that right in the middle. So then the last thing I did was I set up a stop. I could slide my piece up against that stop and when I cut all four of these sides on both pieces they'll be perfectly align with that stop. So once I had my little stub tenons cut, I marked an inch in from either side, and then I'll just cut out these little rectangles with a handsaw. So now that I have the tenons on all the edges of my pieces, I can mark my mortises, cut those mortises, and then the rough frame of this will be done. I marked all my pieces with bottom, and these are still about an inch and a half too long. I'm going to not trim them until I'm ready to taper the bottoms, and that's mainly because if I'm going to be dragging them along my workshop, um, I'd much rather not worry about the bottoms of it knowing that they're going to be trimmed and then tapered. Then what I did was I marked the first one and that mortise is going to be on the inside edge of where your plywood is. Now this looks like it's going to be a pretty fragile corner because you're going to be going a half inch to this and there's already a huge cutout here. But remember that plywood is going to be glued in here and it fits really snugly so this gap will be gone and you'll basically just have this one little half inch by five inch mortise here. So I, since my wood is about an inch and three eighths, that was this original mark back here. It's three inches wide so I marked up from the bottom of all of my cuts three inches up and I got that outside square. The tenon itself is only five inches so I came an inch down on either edge and made those marks and then using my square on the actual tenons I found the depth and then transferred the depth with my square to the edge and then I did the same exact thing for the other side. So those are my outer edges for that tenon. Then I took my little gauge over here and I marked that for center. And I had to calculate in the thickness of this edge. And then I drew my center line down there so I know that my drill bit should line up with the center line. And this little inner square is what I'm going to take out. Once I had that one done, I lined all these up. And then I transferred those marks consecutive to, consecutively to my other four pieces. So I know that they're all going to be exactly the same because all of my lines, marks line up. And I made sure to tri double, triple, gazillion check that these are marked on the inside edge where those grooves are so that they'll line up both pieces. If I'd accidentally marked this over here, it would be a huge bummer. Since I still have that bit mounted in my drill press and I didn't move my jig and my jig fits those legs, I think I'm just going to use this method to drill out those mortises and clean them up and fit those pieces in. And that is another plus to having rearranged this workshop is usually I had to move stuff around so much to be able to use the space that I didn't get to just leave stuff set up 
But when you're doing a project like this, it makes life so much easier if you can make a small jig, mount it in your machine, and then be able to use it for the rest of the build. So I set my depth gauge to drill only half inch into this piece, which is the depth of my tenon. And then before I start each piece, I always lower the bit a little bit and make sure that that jig is still tracking on my center line, which it's tracking perfectly on my center line the whole way through. cleaned up my mortise and just like on my other pieces I rounded over my tenons. This side is that one little rough piece that I'm going to have to smooth out probably with a hand plane and then I test it. So I had to put the camera down to fit that because I couldn't really fit it while I was holding it and that is the fit I'm looking for. I'll have to clean it up a little bit. There's a hairline gap just at the top but the bottom and the other side are just near perfect. So what I'll do now is I'll mark this small post one, bed frame post one going into one, so I'll always know, and I'll mark up and down because this could be flipped, obviously. So I can line up my numbers and know which ones go with which. And then for the other three posts, it's a rinse and repeat process. I'm not gonna film it. If you can do one, you could do four, and then I'll probably I would like before the end of the day to dry fit this bed back together and shoot um, a photo of it over to the customer, see what they think. So this is what that looks like mocked up and it, I wasn't going to film it because I thought it was going to just be a huge pain in the butt to get it back together but it actually went together pretty well and that's because I kept that sheet of plywood in that runner and then I was just able to lift it up with my foot and slide the side back on and it made life a lot easier. Before what I did was I put the side up, the bottom in, and then tried to slide the plywood in and then add the other leg and that was just terrible. So it went together pretty well. So this is all fitted together now with no glue, no screws, nothing, just the dry joints, and it looks pretty good.